So we're going to start with 10 one minute poses and um, to draw the figure. And of course, the question is, what the hell can I draw in a minute? Like, right? Like, what, what am I doing to get drawing in a minute? <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to show you right now. You can kind of follow along with me with this figure, which we'll also draw on our own later. Um, I'll tell you what you can't do. You can't do facial features. You can't draw fingers. You can't draw toes. You can't really draw details. You can't do proportions. But what you can do is something that shows the movement of the pose. And the quickest way to do that, I'm just going to sketch it on here so you see it, is to draw a set of gesture, what we call gesture lines. Yeah, and you'll see the first one kind of goes through the middle of the head. The second one goes through the shoulders and down into the arms and the hands. The third one goes through the chest and the others go through the legs. So when we start with a gesture, we can, I'm sketching here, you can go along with me if you want to or just watch. Right, I can kind of go like this one, two, three. Right, that really is the beginning. And then what you can probably get in is kind of a, a head shape. And then I like to use circles to show joints. So joints for the shoulders, joint for the knee, joint for the elbows, which are a little bit smaller than the shoulders, and joints for the wrists. Same with the joint for the knee and the joint for the feet, so the ankle here, right? So the importance here is to understand that when you're drawing an arm or a leg, it's not a straight line. There is a kind of a bending around a joint. So there's always a circle and arms are generally kind of constructed and built like this. So I might then try, remember, I'm not so worried about proportions. I'm more interested in like kind of um, what, is, what is the kind of position of the pose. So here I've got these giant hands. Well, we're going to talk about that. We're going to be dealing with what happens when things come toward you getting bigger, what happens with the kneeling pose. You can see this is kind of a mess, right? My feet is like a flipper. There's the other foot. Notice how huge the feet and the hands are. So really, and maybe I can get a little bit of hair in. So really a gesture kind of looks like this. It's getting um, the sort of stick figure movement of the pose. Right, so, so remember this in the next circulations. I'm about to give you 10 one minute poses and you're gonna just flip through them. Um, but like practice sketching, the, and don't worry if you don't get it all, just do your best, okay? Just do your best. No one's gonna look at these. We do these to get out of whatever headspace we came into class with. I'm a little bit busy, right? Everybody's a little bit busy here. You might be flustered. You might just be ending with work. And we do this to kind of um, move into the slower, more intentional looking space of drawing. So you can do as many as you want. You can do them as big as you want, or you can put several small ones on a page. You can let them go ahead. Uh, um, and hold on here. And Marcel, I'm gonna add you to this class thread. So don't worry about that, that's easy for me to do. Oh, sorry. Sun, um, okay, hold on. I am going to. Oh, yeah, this is annoying. Here, hold on. I'm going to call up a different browser. Okay. Here. All right. So I'm going to call up our. Well, you'll see it in a minute. I mean, I'm about to share the screen with you so you guys can all see this. All right, so this is my favorite uh, website for doing figure drawing practice. You can see here 
that um, we can select what kind of models we want. We want nude models. We want both male and female. We want adults. And we can pick the amount of time it'll take to do something. So these are gonna be 60 seconds each. I'll go ahead and draw along with you. You guys ready? Do the best you can. Are you ready? All right. I'll go and everybody else. And use your charcoal or your pencil, whatever makes you feel comfortable. Um, let's go. Don't get overwhelmed. Just do your simple. Our favorite time. It's David. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we've even done this one before. I think we've done every one of these. Well, I just pulled out some really neat ones for later poses. So not yet, they do sort of slip in new ones, but it is true a lot of them. Sammy, you have to stop that. Maybe, good job. The baby is starting to guard the house. Oh. I'm turning off. Okay. Don't be just don't be um, thinking about the outside. Don't think about anything else other than the figure. Is there Is that the Asian gentleman? I think so. I can tell from this position. You're still trying to get the lines of the head and the shoulders. Just do your best. We're going to talk in this class about what we want to do starting in. Um, and we're going to save this figure until the end of August. Then we're we're going to move to other things and we're going to talk about what those could be. Notice that the upper torso and the lower torso usually have a, a different, they switch directions. So while the upper torso is going one way, the lower torso is usually going a different, it's usually twisting in a different direction.
sometimes the gesture is the most fun part. <laughs> really, that's just it. Um, you're going to do, by the way, a big circle for the hip joint, too. So hip joint is like the shoulder, knee, and, and ankle, wrist are kind of like it's hip joint, shoulder, all that business. I like how that turned out. Seven. You, your figures can um, kind of cross each other. This is really just warm up. I didn't used to do it, but then I found that I often needed this warm up too, just because this is of the time of day this is. This is eight, so we've got two more. I think this was six, right? This is the seven. No, no, this is one. Oh, I counted the one. Yeah, this seven. Um, I counted the one that we were. I did the demo on. So. This would be a good charcoal. Sorry. No, I can't play right now. It's interesting how they get a lot of the models, how the hair becomes a movement in itself. It's like a, it's a body part. Okay, now I think we're on the last one, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's nine for us. Nine for us and ten for you. Okay. Let's do one more after this then. Yeah, I'm like, done. <laughs> I'm done. My head is somewhere else today. Yeah, I understand it. Okay, last one. Same model.
All right, stop the share. Woo, how'd that go, you guys? Not that old, but that's fine. So um, you don't have to send these in, but if you did one or two or several that you like, uh, please <laughs> go ahead and send them, share them. Um, in general, this is something that teachers don't look at. Uh, in the beginning of a typical drawing class, right? This is really how you start to warm up. But I'll send you, I had one that I was really happy with because as I was doing it, I was like, oh, this is a pain. But afterwards, it turned out really nice. Um, it was that one he was jumping in the air. And I liked how this turned out here. Hold on. Oh yeah, Diana, nice. Yeah, Marcel, nice. That lady standing up, right? So this is a really, here, I'll send one. This is my favorite. All right, nice, you guys, very nice. All right, so this is my, um, let's see. Good, Christina, excellent. Excellent. Notice that all of our work looks different. So even though I've given a similar instruction, everybody's got something, everybody does this in a slightly different way. And there's not really a right or a wrong to this. Um, but uh, notice what is, what is, did anybody notice anything, observe anything about this exercise? Does it help you, does it do anything for you? What does it do? Get out of our heads. Yes, definitely it helps you get out of your head. Is it an easy exercise? No. Is it an impossible exercise? No. No. Right? So that is the sweet spot in drawing. Is it easy? No. But it's it's possible, right? It gives you uh, an, an idea on how to simplify. So if you're watching somebody watch down the street, this is how you sketch them, right? This is yeah. how you sketch somebody. You're, watch, you're working on movement and gesture and, and getting that. Now the gesture fits in as we start to go to longer uh, sketches, um, but uh, it fits in a little bit later in the process. Once we start getting, and it teaches you how to simplify and look at the bigger shapes. And everybody here sent me something kind of neat. So I feel like what you're getting is, yeah, these are great, Christina, very nice. <laughs> um, really good, Marcel, I like them. Um, so uh, Diana, I like them. So it's like a very, <laughs> It also teaches us that art is one of those things that's a long game, right? And I, I often find that students get really perfectionist. Here, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna come up here and join you guys for a second because I wanna, I wanna make this clear. I often find, <laughs> there we go. Uh, I often find that students get very perfectionist, particularly smart uh, driven adults like all of you because all of you do really well in your jobs, that's why you're doing it. And it's really hard not to apply those principles um, of going harder, going fast, being the best one in class, right? Like all of that stuff um, it, uh, you take into this class. What I like about this process is that um, our expectations around figure drawing are like, well, this is a huge job. So if I get the shoulder right, it's, it's awesome. If I can get that simplified form right in just one, if I could just show one that's like actually kind of seems to be moving, I'm excited. So it reminds us, it brings our expectations back to reality, which is that this is a long practice, 
that you'll get good at after years of doing it. Right. So we have these little successes all the time, but it just brings us like, I feel like people leave their perfectionist tendencies behind when it comes to figure drawing, because quite frankly, there's a lot going on, particularly in this pose, which we're about to talk about. So uh, one of the things I want to review with you, does anybody have questions about this before we go on? No. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you how to structure this. Hey, Leo. Yeah. <clears throat> one quickie is, um, and maybe you can just kind of like double down on it when you yeah. talk about this figure, but um, I started off with the line like you mentioned or you drew here. And then as the, maybe like the fourth body came on, I couldn't help but then start drifting more to like outlining the body versus <laughs> starting with the planes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because you got tired, right? And like tired of seeing it. I think, don't worry about it. On the one minute, it's really not a big deal. Um, the gesture plays a more interesting structural role as we start to build measurements into it. Okay. So you'll see, but it's a good observation. Yeah, we get tired. <laughs> the 10th push up is always never as great as like the, you know, second or the third one. Or sometimes the 10th push up is the best. I don't know. Like it just depends on the day. So, um, but good to observe about yourself that you tend to move towards the outlines. When we're building a drawing, we're going both inside and outside all the time. So you can see that these lines cross each other, right? Like I can't actually see, this is the line between his two shoulders, which I've run right through his head. I can't see it, but I have to imagine it there so that I know where the shoulder will wind up on the other side. Um, I had a teacher once who used to say, you need to draw what you see and also what you can't see. So you need to know where things are even and so these lines really help you do that and people shy away from them because they uh, cut through other areas and it disturbs people to do that but this is one way of deconstructing a figure that makes sense so yeah yeah notice when you avoid doing it notice you get tired no it's thinking it's really like also you're learning a new method right a new way of doing it okay so the first thing we're going to do and I'm gonna review with charcoal. So when I'm talking about charcoal, I'm not talking about a charcoal pencil. I'm talking about burnt wood. So you can see here, this makes a very soft line and I can smudge it around. And even if I do, you make a like harder edge with it, right? With the edge like this, I can kind of smush it off if I don't like it. Um, a pencil does, a charcoal pencil doesn't do that, so it doesn't work for this thing. This particular set is uh, Bob's, um, Bob's Fine Vine Charcoal. Uh, so he uses redwoods from the Pacific Northwest forests that have been in forest fires, so this could be any kind of tree wood. Um, but really, you might have willow bark, you might, you might have willow, which is literally willow branches burned. You might have vine, which is grape vines burned. Um, I have a student in uh, Scapoose, Oregon, who lives on a farm and she has a wood fire burning all the time. So she just goes out and grabs a piece of, literally goes out and grabs a piece of draw, you know, non-hot wood and uses that. And it works and does beautiful drawings with it. So what I want you to notice is that, and what and uh, and something that sneaks into sets, and I want you to be aware of, is this stuff, this compressed charcoal. So it looks a little bit like burnt charcoal, but you see it's denser, feels heavier, and the biggest issue is compressed charcoal. You can't blend out. So you do not want to use compressed charcoal until the very end of your drawing when you know where everything is. So if you happen to see any, you might, I mean, if you have a bunch of charcoal from different places, this is something that can slip in. Um, I recommend, it won't be in any of the steps that I recommend, but if you've got it, I would recommend, you'll notice it's heavier, it's denser, and when you leave a mark on your paper, it won't come off. So you don't wanna use that, right? Because we want the fluidity of charcoal to kind of maintain across and then 
the last thing that's really helpful is this kneaded eraser. It's kind of like a little gray. For those of you who grew up in the US, it's a little like silly, silly putty, right? Remember what we used to put, and actually it kind of works a little like silly putty. If you look here, it, see, it'll pull off, like just like when you put silly putty on a cartoon and it would you push it on and pull it off. So it's got a very, you can squeeze it, you can push it into little shapes if you want to make a little tiny shape like this. It doesn't remove all of it, huh? It still leaves some marks. I mean, or is it supposed to get it all white? No. No, okay. no. It's not supposed to get then it, it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So the first thing I want you guys to do, we're going to start by drawing with this. So the first thing I want you to do is to, so this is what we call toning. You're going to tone your paper, your newsprint paper, and your mixed media paper. Well, mixed media paper, I got that. I know, yeah, I'm not a big fan of mixed media. I mean, I'd rather you use newsprint, but if you don't have it, you're going to use your mixed media paper. I'd rather you be using newsprint. If you've got it, use newsprint. It is, you'll see, charcoal is made for newsprint. So I'm doing what's called toning the paper. I'm using the side of the charcoal, I'm covering the whole thing. Right, the whole thing is covered. And when I start to construct my drawing, I'm not gonna use this, I'm gonna use this. So how do we use this? Well, quite simply. <laughs> I'm going to show you a couple of measurements. We're going to do, we're going to start as always with measuring the vertical distance of our figure. Marcel, this is something you and I were talking about the other day. So we do that. Here, I'm going to take a picture of this once I, I get this down. We do this by identifying the top and the bottom of the head. In this particular case, we can, because the head's kind of turned away from us, we try to go from the top of the head to the chin or whatever we can see of the chin. I know this is a little bit hard to see. Oh, there's my, there's my orange. Here's my orange. Here, what's this? There's one. So here's the top and here's the bottom of the head. And it's at a tilt like this, right? So if we were to take this measurement of this head, so you can see my fingers or, my pencil, I'm taking a pencil here, and I have the top, the top to the bottom of the head blocked off like this. So this is the length. See where my finger is? So my, the top of my pencil is lined up with the top of the head. The bottom of my pencil is lined up with the chin, right? Now I can figure out how many, how long, how, how long this, this figure is. So let's see, from here, it's one, two, three. So this figure is exactly three heads long. Not to be confused, we're gonna start with this measurement. And I'm gonna mark it down again so you guys can see it. And then I'm gonna send it over the thread. One, Two. Oh, wait, is that right? One, two, and uh, three and a half. The foot is a little bit more than half a head. Um, so here, let me take a picture of this and then I'll show you how we put this into construction. Be careful what you wish for, Marcel. This is it. All right. So when I start with my figure on this paper, I'm going to identify, I'm going to decide how wide the head is. So you see how I didn't really, I'm not measuring it from here to here. I'm not making it the same size. I'm making it a little bigger, actually. I am defining my head like this. And then, I'm marking off one, two, three. 
like three and a half heads. See that? And if it's really unclear what I'm doing, the line I'm drawing is from here to here. I know this is confusing. So here, let me get this in. So it doesn't really matter how big I make my head or how small I make my head. I, because my head is being used, we've defined the head, and now the head is going to be used to define everything. That's not even with the, uh, with the. I mean, it looks like the, uh, the, the body frame is, is, it's a bit back, and, and it's, it's kind of compressed a bit. It's definitely compressed. I'm thinking, yeah. Yep. Don't get too into that idea, right? I mean, yes, that's what's happening, which means that because what how tall are our head, how tall are our figures normally when they're standing? Do you remember? If they're standing or what? Yeah, if they're standing. If a figure is standing, an adult figure is standing, how an, an adult man, probably seven, a woman. Yeah, seven ish, right? So yeah. when somebody's sitting, that's three and a half, that's four, right? It's about half the size. So don't get caught up in, oh, the figure's going back, shit, what am I going to do? The easier thing to think about is I just need to find the vertical distance from here to here. So when you're drawing anything, you always want to use this method of finding the vertical distance. And I do it by taking a piece of what I'm trying to draw and defining that distance. In this case, that's the head. And then I'm using it for all my measurements. Really truthfully, this about orange, the color orange. What's that, honey? Do you do we not? We don't erase that part out, do we? The orange. We're gonna. We haven't got there yet. Oh, we were still so okay. We haven't got there yet. We're just here at blue. And really, notice this foot is actually almost an entire head head length. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Because it's closer to the camera, right? It's very close to the camera, right? Also, feet and hands are huge. Oh, you're right. Oh, don't ever argue with the teacher. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You can always argue with me. Um, so this is where I want you to start. And instead of doing this, right, we're doing this with our eraser. Right now, Paul, now is when we get into, now we can start to add the gesture, these orange lines, because these lines help us see where they are. For example, this kind of comes across the middle of head one, right? This comes down one, two, three. This arm comes down. Uh, elbow stops right here and comes down almost to the middle of head uh, three. You see what I'm doing here? Mm -hmm. This, and I'm also still, so I'm using, um, I'm not so worried, is this part closer, is this part farther away, right? I'm more concerned with what is everything doing in relation to everything else? I can see that this foot comes through here, right? And I don't know that I totally have these in the right place. I also see that the chest kind of comes a little bit to the right of the knee here. So this line is really where the knee is. Mm-hmm. So this is called construction, right? So I'm, now I'm using my, but I'm placing them a little bit more clearly. And I can check them by doing this, by taking this measurement that is the head and checking. Oh, look, it comes out. So if I take my measurement that's a, that is the head, I can see from the center here, Ah, the knee comes out a little farther, so I'm probably in pretty good shape. 
From here, the center, the shoulder comes out just about one head length. See that? Mm -hmm. So I use the head, which I have defined randomly to measure everything. I can see that this piece is about half the head. This part of the foot kind of coming out here. And I can see that the head, that the foot comes almost, is almost the size of the head. Not quite, but almost. It's very elegant, is it not, ladies and gentlemen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Instead of fumbling around and trying to freaking and saying to yourself, oh my God, how do I show this? The, 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 the shoulder is going back and the blah, blah, blah is coming forward. You stop thinking about that as a shoulder. You stop thinking about that as anything other than a shape that's related to this shape that's related to these shapes. Mm -hmm. It's like building a quilt or doing a puzzle or putting together a car engine. So once you've got those shapes in place, then you can start to see. So I can see, for example, that here is head one, right? So head one, and I can also start to use my, so here's head one right here, right? I can see that as the head, as the head is turned sideways, it kind of comes shaped like that. And I can see that the knee, is here. And then I can see that the hands that start right ahead to you. There's the thumb right here. Right, the other things come like that. And I can see that the hands come almost, here's head three. The hands kind of start and end. So notice how I'm giving myself these little points before I really start committing to anything. Now I can use, now I have an idea of where things are. It's a miracle, isn't it? It's amazing how much I have to talk people into this being a good idea. I'm like, this is such a much better idea than whatever it is you're thinking about doing. <laughs> I can tell you right now, stop thinking. Doing something completely different. What are you working on, Diana? Yeah, I. you get to guess what it is because I just sketched out something I'm just starting to Are you doing your dad since you just did your mom? No. Okay. No. <laughs> That was a good guess though, right? <laughs> I, I, you can guess when I send the picture. You can all guess. Right, all right, fair enough. So you see now when I start to do this, oh, and the other thing I can do, uh -huh. even before I start getting into this, hold on, I'll take a look at yours in a second, is I can now take my eraser and I can start erasing the light shapes. Sorry, I got ahead of myself here. We don't need these lines just yet. Oh, but I know what that is, Diana. You do? Yep. Hold on, I'll take a look at it in just a second. I think. Here, I'm working through all the I'll, light. I'll text you. Okay, hang on, you guys. We'll get there. Let me just, this is an important point. Uh, notice that I am getting, I'm taking my eraser and I'm erasing out light areas. And I'm just working around the dark areas. So look how this figure is already starting to emerge, even with very little detail. By the way, where's the light coming from? The right. Yeah. Right? So look at how, without even really putting any lines in, I'm already getting a sense of the figure. I should have put those lines in. I should have just done this first. I'm kind of skipping, and I still know where things are, right? Because I, I have an idea because I've, I have my gesture lines. So I'm kind of following my gesture. So before I go with these super hard lines, 
You want to draw something? I am working on my soft ones. So look at, I want you to see this at this stage. A, I'm sorry, this is totally beautiful. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I'm not saying my drawing is beautiful. I'm saying this process is beautiful. I want you to look at it. Ha! It's a doorknob. A door knocker? Yes. It is. <laughs> yeah, it was easy to tell. <laughs> but I don't know where it is. It's an unusual looking door knocker. Look at this. So look at what I've done just with measuring with almost no lines and just erasing out the lights. So I'd like you to try that before you go into the dark. Now I can come, of course, right into the darks and start adding those in. I'm not thinking to myself, oh, he's going back, he's going forward, what's going on? I'm just trying to get the shape. You did a negative. This is a way of doing a kind of an, yeah, you're kind of pulling a drawing out using, using shape, using dark sunlight. Now, I am a painter before I am a drawer. So what I will tell you is when I struggled with the pencil, but when I learned I could do this, all of a sudden drawing made sense to me in a way it had never done before. Some people like this method. Some people find it really frustrating. Um, I find that this is just joyous. It's like, I'm just enjoying drawing, period. <laughs> right. So if you're watching, you can watch me do this for a little while. Um, okay. Notice, or you can do this yourself. Just do this yourself. Absolutely. Christine, that's the whole point. Yes, enjoy this process. Oh, what? It's great. Oh, now this is interesting. So I found it's very easy to get too wide here. So one of the things I'm, I'm doing is making sure, yep, that I'm, so I just put this, I put this uh, line out to the arm here too wide. So I'm making sure, let's see, I'm using the head. It looks like just the face is the space between the knee and the arm. See that? So as I start to get in that line, I'm more likely to get it the right off, huh? place. Anyway, you're going to be off. There's no question. Everybody is. So we all are off at times. And it's easy to make things too big. But, and avoiding lines as much as possible and dealing with uh, light and dark shapes is probably easier. At least I find that easier. Some people don't like it. I find it easier. It's always easier to deal with things as shapes rather than arm, me. Leah, I have to go get Coco. Um, I'll be right back. Okay. We're all on a first name basis with everybody's dogs here. <laughs> everybody's giggling. All right, and what I might do is I might remove this. Um, you guys all have a picture of this. So you have the construction measurements. Um, I'm gonna put up a picture where I haven't blocked off everything that's happening with the construction measurements so you can see it. Maybe I can fit both of them on here. Might be able to fit both of them. There's that one. Yeah, there we go. Isn't this a great 
picture for charcoal. And isn't this a wonderful process for <laughs> drawing in general? So next week, you guys, I want to show you how to do a figure in pen and ink. I'll show you the materials in a minute. Not in a minute, in a while. Um, but our big question remains, um, what do we do uh, once we get to September with this uh, class? Because the Friday class is going to start move to figure drawing. And I think we've done enough figure drawing. Um, so we have, okay. options. we could go to painting. We could do watercolor painting for a while. The uh, Friday class is still watercolor? It's watercolor till September. Okay. Then it moves to watercolor. Uh, Diana, I'll send you the new schedule. I was kind of thinking. Oops. Yeah, I, I saw your email and I forgot to answer it. And I think it was good. Yeah, um, my thought is that we turn this into some kind of painting class, but I want, I mean, I don't know. What do you guys want to do? Yeah, we haven't done painting in a while. My thought is we would go to watercolor painting for a while and then maybe move to sort of a uh, combo gouache acrylic thing. What do you think? That's cool. I also really like the pastels, but God, they are messy. Yeah, they are. I thought I could bring, and also, you know, we do have a pastel class. That's true. So I'd like to try and offer a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teaching a wonderful class. One, two. Do you ever take the pastel class, Lisa? No, I haven't. I, I see what they're working on, though, and it looks really cool. She's really good. She's really good. I would say Marie's doing a great job and I like it. You know, uh, she's a stu former student of mine. So while she has a kind of familiar, a similar style of teaching, she still does things differently. So I like it. I think you would enjoy it. Okay. That's the whole idea with having different teachers. Right? Yeah. It's really, she's really great. I'm really appreciating her. <laughs> You're going to be, y'all are going to be mucking with this foot for a while. <laughs> it's um I'm sorry let me exp sorry Leah uh is it okay if I kind of crow the head a bit in the in crowing I mean like that uh in mad the crow that has like the cone the backward cone face thing you, you can do whatever you want huh you can do whatever you want no but I mean in general for uh for heads um, I'm not sure how to answer that question. For the head, the, in German, the head, like in her, the head. Yeah. Is it okay to, when the, with the, with the neck to kind of bring it into, instead, instead of a, like a V, instead of a, uh, a U? It Does all that... depends on what the shape is, man. It's Subjective thing, depending on what position the person is. So what is the I'm, shape? Not, I can't, I'm not giving you any rule on that because there is no way to make a rule like that. You can't make okay. that. It depends yeah, it has, on the, you can't even I'm, see his neck here. But I'm seeing the U shape in the uh, in the head and also in the chin area. Just so. do the shapes that you see and stop trying to make a rule. That's random and will confuse you more. You're over into the right. 
You're over intellectualizing this. What I'm telling you is look at the shape that the thing is and draw it. Don't say, is this always okay with heads in this you know, position or heads? I want you to look at your, I want you to look at this shape and see what those shapes are. Um, it's gonna be different every time. You see what I'm saying? I can't answer that. I guess what I'm saying is you're asking the wrong question because I can't, I can't answer how it should be. Uh, it's just kind of what it is. I understand, yeah. Uh, and that's a very typical left brain reaction. And I see uh, people in this class do it a lot. Not this class personally, but you know, all the classes. I see people trying to uh, to make sort of senseless rules. <laughs> I see you trying, it's not senseless. You're trying to make sense out of something, but you're approaching it from a left brain perspective, which is this concept of this thing I'm trying to draw. Is it okay if I draw it in this shape? And the reality is things are different shapes at uh, different times, right? In different situations. So I can't like, give you a hard and fast rule about that. All I can say is look at the shape, try and make it look like how it is. But we sure do wanna make that rule, even though it's impossible. <laughs> I am getting there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's what, it's, that's what I mean by the over intellect. It's like kind of thinking too, it's thinking, but in the exact wrong way, that's not gonna help you make the drawing. What I'm trying to do is train you in the way to make the drawing, which is to think about, look at how, I'm sorry, look at how, isn't this just a cool ass drawing? This is such a cool drawing. I almost feel like I could stop right here. I'm not going to, but I like, I'm like, oh my gosh, like I love the way this drawing is a virgin. No, I agree. Mine is not, doesn't look like yours, but at least it looks like a person and it's really cool that it just it's came, came out. Right, because you're yeah. thinking about the shape. Right, so what? Here's a here's a classic mistake people often make. They draw the leg and then they draw the arm and they do not think about the chest space in between, right? But in drawing, we know that this shape, this shape, this shape, and this shape all have to fit. They all have to be um, proportionally correct to each other. So I got to think about this shape. Uh, uh, While I'm thinking about this shape, go ahead and feel free to send this over. Yeah, I need help on the head. What's that? You need help on the head. Um, don't even think about it as a head, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at the shape of the dark hair. Okay. Look at the shape of the light. And then don't worry about the rest of it. Just work around it and you'll be okay. Do you feel like it's, um, my proportions are correct or am I too skinny? Let me check. The, the head and shoulder. Now that I can tell you, give me a second. Oh yeah, you're too skinny. Look at the proportion of the head from here to the edge of the knee, from the edge of the, if you take the head shape and you go from the edge of the knee to the yeah. outside, you can see that it comes out to here. So move your arm out and your shoulder. Okay. So one, two, three. Also foot's longer. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and then of course, that also means this guy needs to come out a little bit more too. Once again, if you look from here, it's like one and a half heads from the center here, which is really this, can you see this, this center line? Yep. So from here, yeah, one and a half heads out. I see. Right? So that's how you use that. And what's nice about charcoal is it's just not that like definitive, right? So you don't feel so much like, oh, you add a line and then you're not. I like to say with pencil lines, we like to act like we're in love with them. 
right? Once you put them down, it's like, what? I can't change that. Oh my God. But you know, with the charcoal one, it's like, eh, don't like that. Rub it out. It goes away. So it's not dominating us quite so much. Oh. Yeah, notice how, how effing big the wrist and the hands are here, even without getting into details. It's massive. Also, notice at the bottom of the leg here, we kind of can't see it. It sort of disappears, what we call a lost edge. Can you see that? There's like, like from where here this is, and <laughs> It's like, whoa, I can't even see that. So you can reflect that in your drawing. Make it dark. As you start to add in your lost uh, edge of your leg, let's see if I need my own advice here and figure out why. Yep, stop here. Myself trying to make this too big. So I can tell you guys that the less you think about it as the thing that you're drawing, and the more you think of it as just a set of light and dark shapes, the better it's going to be for you. And that's the thing that really, we really like to want to put words on things and define them. It's part of our, it's a carryover from learning our language. We want to make sense of things by putting words on it. But sometimes you can't make sense of things by putting words on it. Sometimes you have to make sense of things by putting shapes, shapes on it. And stop, you know, calling it like what it is. Now I'm still not sure. So I'm just checking. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. Notice I'm kind of using my background. I'm darkening my background to help. Oh, I see. Right, to help pull out certain things. I mean, we have a slightly dark shape already because we've toned the paper. But once you really want um, things to come out, you may want to get even darker. You may want to go back in with your. That's the sound that we're playing, Poppy. Huh. Let me know if you want me to turn her off. She's fine. How old is your puppy? Five and a half months. Oh. She's a terrorist in a good way. <laughs> yeah, she's cute. She's I have two dogs in here too, but they're super quiet today. What's up with that? <laughs> they just came from a walk and they're going to walk after this class. So. <laughs> so they know to be patient. Yeah. What kind of dogs do you have? Uh -huh. I have a cockapoo and a dorky. So a dachshund yorky. Oh. You're going to notice this theory about shape is really going to help you when you get into all those fingers. If you think about the fingers, your head's going to explode and you will be unable to draw them at all. But if you just try to look at the dark and the biggest dark and light shapes that kind of bound them, it's going to be easier.
So you're saying the shape, if you look at the shapes. Dark and light shapes. It's hard with, you know, yeah. The light, usually the light in these are, you know, they have those big lights that come down with the. Uh, yeah, look at the biggest light. That's okay. going to help you the most. You know, uh, drawing is very practical. Finding shapes is very practical. It's really just about what you can see. So you can see, although I don't have all the shapes, that he's starting to come out kind of nicely. Oh yeah, I like this one a lot. I knew this was gonna be great. This is a very emotive pose and also kind of easier to get the face in because we just don't see that much of it. I'm gonna copy your shading there. Dude, that's the idea. That's why I'm doing this for you. Kind of amazing, isn't it? So the reason that this was the aha moment for me is that I myself am, am really more of a painter than a drawer. So I kind of resist the pencil. I don't like the lines the pencil makes, these outdoor outlines, as much as I like dark and light shapes like a puzzle, pieces, like a patchwork quilt. In fact, I'm kind of obsessed with patchwork quilts. <laughs> I can stare at them forever. Yeah. So this is um, a preference. I think it's a natural preference. I think everybody has their preferences and what they're best at. Um, and for me, this really helped me to see uh kind of how to draw whereas when i worked with a pencil i didn't get it as much um other people really love the pencil though so you know it's just a question of what you like and other people find this technique kind of frustrating because i'd rather i'm kind of more used to it but i love this technique because i think it it brings drawing to an entirely different realm Go ahead. Sorry, I interrupted somebody. What were you going to say? So go feel free to send this in. Marcel, do you see what I mean, by the way, about how it's not that important about the face once you get the dark and light shapes of the face in? Yeah, it helped to widen the shoulder as well. Right, because you're thinking about this shape, right, in relation yeah. to this shape, in this shape. It's really helps when you think about just the whole sort of thing relationally. Um, our tendency to hyper-focus in on things means that we always forget what's around. So think about what this kind of training can do for you once you hone it as an intellectual skill. It means that you're not only paying attention to what's going on right in front of you, what you're focusing on, but you're also paying attention to the whole environment. You're seeing kind of how the bigger pieces fit. I sent you mine, Leah. Oh yeah, it's coming along. So Lisa, look at how close the, look at where the hair comes in relation to the knee. Oh know? yeah, <laughs> it's totally once off. Again, once again, you're like, you're moving the chin to where you think the chin should be. Yep, okay. So I just move the head, not the knee, right? You just get the hair shape in the right place. Yeah. You don't move the head, you yeah. move the dark where the dark is. And you look at where the shoulder is in relation to the dark, to that dark hair. Okay. Behind. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
There we go. Now we're coming along. Marcel, why does your, um, is your, are you using newsprint? Yep. It looks, are you using compressed charcoal? Um, I'm not using compressed charcoal, but I am using a, um, not the willow. What are you using? It's more like a, um, it's a stick, but it's thinner. Oh, yeah. You may want to like, because I can see, so the number one area that I think you really need to work is here. Okay. Because you've drawn the outline of the leg and we can't actually see the outline of the leg. Yep. So so it makes look very skinny and you see, and it's like, so try going over, take, switch sticks if the sticks aren't, switch sticks if the sticks aren't like working for you. Okay. Right. Try another one. Sometimes some oh, me draw equally. Oh. oh no. I have to take a photo of this one. Sammy, that was happened when I don't my oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't know what Sunny did, but she is busted. Huh? 